scouting report on Spanish Pro League. Um, any of y'all who have any kind of hoop dreams, especially uh, the few guys I know still back in the Pacific Northwest who maybe would want to make it out overseas and play. Um, <clears throat> there's definitely... Yeah, I'm just evaluating, basically. It just came from the game. Um, I wasn't able to get any footage because I left my, my card reader at home, although I was sitting, like, primo seats right behind the cameraman and cheerleaders, and it was a packed house of, like, 200 and some people. Um, teams Oviedo, Balancesto, I might put a link down below. Not sure what these guys are getting paid, but they're getting paid to live and they're chilling out in Spain, um, cool city. So, I mean, yeah, it's some kind of a hoop dream. Um, as for the level of play, there were, yeah, I mean, I mean, they're professionals, definitely, and it showed, like, they're, they're good, they're good, but they were weak in some ways, too. Um, as for sizing, like, everybody was sized appropriately. I'd say, like, there were seven-foot centers. Um, the, the fours were long. The twos and the threes really stole the show. They were super long and super splashy on these deep FIBA threes, deep-ish FIBA threes. Um, and then there was the one guards who didn't do too much other than initiate the offense. Um, really loud, grindy playoff atmosphere. Lots of five-on-five -five sets. Only one dunk all game. And the way they ran the offense was basically lots and lots of pin downs for the wing to just come out and catch and maybe attack and shoot. Um, officiating is about what you'd expect. Um, the travel rules are about the same as what you'd expect in a pro game or basically any kind of game in the States. Um, the, things weren't different. Um, yeah, lots of pin downs, lots of screen and rolls screen and rolls to passing to the wings and, and, and such. It just seemed like there was ton, tons of threes, tons of three-point shooting. Um, one thing that's interesting is the molten official balls they play with are striped. I don't, you, you can imagine a molten official, one of those orange and white striped balls. So you can see the seams and the rotation of the ball, which is very interesting to see what was going on. Um, the point guards were not really passing seams passes. Um, shooters were getting to the seams, though, on their threes some of the time. Um, I noticed there were some really weak free throw shooters, the bigs, that would go ten toes to the basket. They wouldn't, squ they wouldn't turn at all. And um, there, was, there were guys who didn't even get to the seams in their free throws, which I thought was insane. As for the one guards, um, I know that's what people want to hear about because um, most people of hoop dreams are just generally, generally little guys who are like, okay, maybe I can make it out. But yeah, I mean, they're professionals, but um, me in particular, I thought that skill-wise, I could be on the floor easy and doing more. However, they're good. They were good. They were good. They're good, and they have things that I don't have in knowledge of, I don't know, the language and the offense and the other players. So, like, I think it would be difficult to work your way in there because you're coming from an angle of trying to take someone's job, and there's not really that much money to go around, it seems. And they're speaking in Spanish. I don't know really what they're doing for import players. It's not a top league team. There's two leagues, but teams can rise and fall. So, yeah, it was a playoff game that they won by two real close game and I don't know they could go up to the top league I think if they win the league I think they do that's the way it works up here you move up and down leagues you could be on an amateur team and if it was filthy enough you can move up to the pro league just yeah work that way I think it's pretty interesting but yeah back to the one guards um three of the four were under six foot um yeah and they weren't long either they didn't have long arms um most of them didn't do too much. One of them was over 6'2". On the other team, it was like 6'2". Looked like a non-factor. Um, 
there were guys who were dribbling with their back to the basket, like, like their crossover bringing the ball up, which is fine, I guess, but I mean, I don't know. Like, it's not ideal for a guard to do that, I feel like. And then the guard who got the most action always played the ball to his right, always passed the ball to the right side of the court, um, had opportunities to go left and would just halt the offense and force it back to the right, I felt like. However, he was very good with his right hand um, and had, like, he had a three, um, he had two layups going to his right and a little pull-up going to his right and didn't really miss any. So um, he was good, right? He, he, he knocked down his buckets. Um, the thing that I was most impressed by that oh, would really, I don't know, really sets these guys apart is their effort level. It was a playoff game and it showed they were going fucking hard. They were going fucking hard on, on defense. So that definitely brought everyone's skill down, so my evaluations could be entirely off. Could be you throw me out there, and I think this would be, even be true, and I just wouldn't, I don't know, i just get tired on defense and get sloppy with the ball, potentially. So that is, there's, there, that's where my bias comes in, because I didn't play. I'm just trying to look at them and then think about what I play like based on my, my own tape of myself or whatever, which is not, is not anything. Um, last thoughts on the guards. Um, oh, they allowed a lot of off arms, which was cool. I like that. Didn't call much on the offense. The offense got to be real physical. Lots of bang down low. Um, so, so there was only the one dunk all game. Yeah, guys weren't the most athletic, although they were well lengthed. But point is, like, as for the one guards, um, yeah, a lot of guys back in. The Pacific Northwest could definitely would have the skills to do it. Definitely. The issue would be to actually get out here. Um, I mean, they're speaking Spanish. They're speaking Spanish. And they're running, you know, running offense, have good rapport with the coaches and such. Teams can't just throw out, can't just sponsor people with visas left and right. They're, there's not that much money. There's 200 people in the playoff, you know small gym right so so those are my thoughts best way to do it would be to find some way to live out here honestly like study or some yeah i don't know somehow try to get a language teaching program or something like that maybe and then try try to be out here because once you're out here and you can compete hey maybe maybe that would be the way to do it or just go somewhere where they speak english Potentially, like England and New Zealand, um, there, yeah. There's ways. There's ways to do it. There's ways to do it without being, um, without getting sponsored. Also, because some of these countries are friendly to American tourists and give you six months in the country, so you can come like before the season starts and leave. I don't know. Six months is maybe not enough, but um, I don't know. Just exploring the options, like. I think that it's possible after seeing the level of play. Um, the level of play is is good, but but I know a lot of good players, so it's, it's definitely interesting.